We need a real war on drugs. You can't just say no. It's deeper than that. You can't just get a palm reader or an astrologer. It's more profound than that. We're spending $150 billion on drugs a year. We've gone from ignoring it to focusing on the children. Children cannot buy $150 billion worth of drugs a year. A few high-profile athletes, athletes are not laundering $150 billion a year. Bankers are. I met the children in Watts who unfortunately in their despair their grapes of hope have become raisins of despair, and they're turning on each other, and they're self-destructing. But I stayed with them all night long. I wanted to hear their case. They said, Jesse Jackson, as you challenge us to say no to drugs, you're right. And to not sell them, you're right. To not use these guns, you're right. By the way, the promise of scepter, they displaced cedar. They did not replace Cedar. We have neither jobs, nor houses, nor services, nor training, nor way out. Some of us take drugs as anesthesia for our pain. Some take drugs as a way of pleasure, do it short-term pleasure and long-term pain. Some sell drugs to make money. It's wrong, we know, but you need to know that we know. We can go and buy the drugs by the boxes at the port. If we can buy the drugs at the port, don't you believe the federal government can stop it if they want to? They say, we don't have Saturday night specials anymore. They say, we buy AK-47s and Uzas, the latest NATO weapons. We buy them across the counter on Long Beach Boulevard. You cannot fight a war on drugs unless and until you're going to challenge the bankers and the gun sellers and those who grow them. Don't just focus on the children. Let's stop drugs at the level of supply and demand. We must end the scourge on the American culture. Leadership. What difference will we make? Leadership cannot just go along to get along. We must do more than change presidents. We must change direction. Leadership must face the moral challenge of our day. The nuclear war buildup is irrational. Strong leadership cannot de desire to look tough and let that stand in the way of the pursuit of peace. Leadership must reverse the arms race. At least we should pledge no fresh use. Why? Because fresh use begets fresh retaliation, and that's mutual annihilation. That's not a rational way out. No use at all. Let's think it out and not fight it out because it's an unwinnable fight. Why hold a card that you can never drop? Let's give peace a chance. Leadership. We now have this marvelous opportunity to have a breakthrough with the Soviets. Last year, 200,000 Americans visited the Soviet Union. There's a chance for joint ventures in the space, not Star Wars and the war arms escalation, but a space defense initiative. Let's build in the space together and demilitarize the heavens. That's a way out. <laughs> America, let us expand. When Mr. Reagan and Mr. Gorbachev met 
It was a big meeting. They represented together one-eighth of the human race. Seven-eighths of the human race was locked out of that room. Most people in the world tonight, half are Asian, one half of them are Chinese. There are 22 nations in the Middle East. That's Europe, 400 million Latin Americans next door to us, the Caribbean, Africa, a half billion people. Most people in the world today are yellow, are brown, are black, non-Christian, poor, female, young, and don't speak English. In the real world, this generation must offer leadership to the real world. We're losing ground in Latin America, Middle East, South Africa, because we're not focusing on the real world. That real world, we must use basic principles, support international law. We stand the most to gain from it. Support human rights. We believe in that. Support self-determination. We're built on that. Support economic development. You know it's right. Be consistent and gain our moral authority in the world. I challenge you tonight, my friends, let's be bigger and better as a nation and as a party. We have basic challenges. Freedom in South Africa. We've already agreed as Democrats to declare South Africa to be a terrorist state. But don't just stop there. Get South Africa out of Angola. Free Namibia. Support the frontline states. We must have a new humane human rights and system policy in Africa. I'm often asked, Jesse, why do you take on these tough issues? They're not very political. We can't win that way. If an issue is morally right, it will eventually be political. It may be political and never be right. Yes. Fannie Lou Hamer didn't have the most votes in Atlantic City, but her principles have outlasted every delegate who voted to lock her out. Rosa Parks did not have the most votes but she was morally right. Dr. King didn't have the most votes about the Vietnam War, but he was morally right. If we are principled first, our politics will fall in place. Jesse, why don't you take these big, bold initiatives? A poem by an unknown author went something like this. We mastered the air, we've conquered the sea, annihilated distance and prolonged life. But we're not wise enough to live on this earth without war and without hate. As for Jesse Jackson, I'm tired of sailing my little boat far inside the harbor bar. I want to go out where the big ships float, out on the deep where the great ones are. And should my frail craft prove too slight, the wave that sweep those billows o'er, I'd rather go down in the stirring fight than drowse to death at the sheltered shore. We got to go out, my friends, where the big boats are.